we got this great clip from one of our long content videos. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Enjoy. Occupancy rate. So occupancy rates are really exactly that. So how much time during the year is your property rented versus how much time during the year is your property vacant? So the metric that indicates the percentage of the time that the rental property is occupied by tenants, a high occupancy rate generally signifies stable rental income and cash flow. We also use this occupancy rate. In fact, we use this occupancy rate much more often when we're determining how we're doing on the nightly rate stuff. So we run our long-term rental income portfolio at about a 90 to 95% occupancy rate. And many years we're up there at 98, 99, 100% occupied. So we will have a window where we've bought something that needs a whole bunch of work. We do the value add investment and we get it to where we can rent it out. And then we find good stable tenants and hopefully we keep them for a long period of time. And year over year, we might have, again, 90 to 100% occupancy. And on that long-term stuff, that's what we're looking for. We wanna have at least a 90% occupancy rate, as opposed to on the nightly rate stuff where we've got a small guest house, let's say, and we have seven rooms that are rented every night. We're really happy if we can be at 60 or 65% occupancy throughout the year. That would be tremendous for us. And we're profitable on those things, oftentimes down to like 35 or 40% occupancy. So just keep in mind that it's a really, really key metric for you guys, especially when you're doing the nightly rate rental stuff. You're going to live and die by your occupancy rate on the nightly rental. Number six is the operating expense ratio. This ratio compares the property's operating expenses to its gross operating income and lower operating expenses relative to income signify a better profitability. For us, we're telling you what we do and how we do it. And we talk about why we use this ratio when we're looking at the nightly rate way more than we do when we're looking at the long-term rental stuff. The long-term rental stuff should be pretty stable, high occupancy rates. You don't have a ton of costs as opposed to a guest house. And, and we do both guys. So we invest in nightly rental portfolio here on the island of Puerto Rico. And we invest in the long-term rental portfolio, both in the States and here on the island of Puerto Rico. So when we're looking at operating expense ratios, we're looking at them usually as a function of how we're doing inside of running a small guest house or a small hotel. And what we look for is what is it that we can cut back on expenses? How can we become more profitable, right? We're trying to look for through this ratio places where we can save money so that we can become more profitable. Number seven, this is a big one. This is debt service coverage ratio, the DSCR. And so in the States, the DSCR, this ratio is used for lenders to quickly determine how much your property is bringing in annually and compare that to what a bank would kind of willingly and gladly and quickly lend you on the property. So there's something out there called a DSCR loan, a debt service coverage loan or a debt service ratio loan. And in this, what they're looking for is the property's ability to pay its debt obligations with its operating income. So it's calculated by dividing the property's net operating income by its debt service payments. So you guys know if you follow this channel very much, we don't have a lot of debt, but we are interested in these debt service coverage ratio loans, especially on the island of Puerto Rico, in order to unlock some capital that we've had out here for now five, six years and we've got it in stable investments that are throwing off positive cash flow and doing really well. And so if we could get a loan that was based on a function of how much money the property's bringing in annually, we would borrow up to something that we feel very safe with. You know, maybe we borrow 60 five or 70 or 75 percent of the value of the property provided that we have enough income coming in to cover it and that we can sleep at night and we can feel good about it that would be a safe loan for us and so it's an important metric for you when you're thinking about borrowing money it's an important metric certainly for the bank when they're thinking about lending you money and here's the quick math that you can think about if you're bringing in twelve thousand dollars a year annually pretty much you could probably borrow up to the point where you're spending $12,000 a year on your loan. So if you're making $12,000 a year, the bank may lend you a loan amount that would have you paying up to about the same $12,000 of debt per year. 
probably they want it to be. And I think that if you're going to borrow money, you should probably make it safer than that. And instead of going with the one to one ratio, if you got $12,000 a year of annual income, maybe borrow an amount of money where you would pay out about $8,000 or $9,000 a year on your debt service coverage. So if you did that $8,000 a year in my example that I continue to use, $12,000 of rental income annually, and you borrow enough money that your debt service is about $8,000 a year, that would be a 1.5 debt service coverage ratio. And a bank would probably be pretty damn happy with lending you that money because you'd have plenty of money coming in on your rental property to pay back that loan. So you guys use that to go and determine whether or not you should be borrowing against your property, how much you should borrow against it. When you're borrowing money, be very safe, be very cautious. Hey guys, thanks for watching that. Subscribe to our channel, watch this next, and then also check out the pinned content for more great content, guys. God bless.